a little bit, or you have to just take some of the CC around from the setup rolls for Immortals, because what Immortals is doing is they're picking setup in four positions and then letting Pull Belt to do all the damage on Corky. So one of the two has to be taken away, or you just have to be able to shut down the Corky. Well, we'll see what happens here. Aurelian Soul Band for IMT. Trogeth gonna join the list on the blue side. And there's Caitlyn Band on that CLG side along with Zach. We'll see where Maokai falls in the order of things. Certainly not on Immortals to take it away. Yeah. Imagine CLG will ban it on red side, but we will have to see. They could dare them to go for it. I mean, I've seen Immortals ban Shogath and Maokai on blue side. They did it yesterday in their series just because they're not theoretically used to playing it, but it hasn't cost them yet, hasn't cost them any matches because they're comfortable saying what they are and aren't comfortable with and playing around that. There's a no band, though. and there is a Maokai for CLG, so Mortal's kind of picking up a band there in some senses. As first pick Thresh over to Ole, this is the champion that it's hard to say exactly where it fits into the priority list, still a very good support, arguably still the best support. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's also a champion Ole took to a 70% win rate to rank one on the solo queue ladder. It's his bread and butter. Well, there's Callista Band, a uh, pick up, sorry, for CLG, and oh my god, it's gonna get Gragas most likely. And taken as a flex, of course, but I think more often seen in the jungle. Yeah, I think so. Omar God could very well play that Gragas, but Immortals are going to be getting very similar things to what they had last game. They could easily pick the Jarvan here if they want to. They could also pick the Corky here if they want to and maintain a lot of that flexibility and similar style team compositions that have been working for them. Yeah, but it feels like they kind of got it all already. Jarvan pretty safe. Either into the Gragas or as a blind pick, which is kind of what I expected to be here. I think the big question for Immortals is, do they want to pick mid lane now and uh, potentially run Pope Belt into some counter matchups? Or do they want to flash Ivern randomly? Yeah. Or take Jin, which I think is what they're going to do. Yeah, the uh, Ivern flash. A and there's a funny. Blitzcrank. Woo, instant Blitz. So that's the thing you want to combo with the Callista. If it's not Thresh, it's the Blitzcrank. So CLG trying to go in with that bottom lane, but they're up against a formidable duo in the Thresh and the Jin. Technically, both teams have solo lanes to show if we are to think that X Smithy will go Jungle Jarvan, he still can. If they don't throw Jungle Bands at him though, he can still go any of the other uh, junglers he's been fairly used to. I do keep forgetting that X Smithy is actually one of the players, apart from Moon, that's willing to play in the jungle. Of course, did it last game, so my brain, thank you for helping me out there. But uh, there's LeBlanc Band from Mortals. Casted and already taken away. Kind of an interesting target ban there from CLG, but looks like mid lane's currently being targeted by both sides. Yeah, you can see the LeBlanc Band. I think that's in part response to the Casted and Ban. Uh, Casted and Ban also could be something to ban against Corky. Uh, because Casted is very good in the Corky, they're just going to do both of them. I thought maybe who he would try and control it, but when they're throwing this many bans at the mid lane, maybe who he's got that pocket pick Velkaz or something a little bit different. I do like the fact that they banned Corky. I like it as well. I think, again, forced by both to play something else. They already have so much good setup that they showed from game one, and there's a Nar ban by yeah. Immortals. Talia's still up, so I think that's the pick here for either mid laner. Uh, if you are COG, you lock it in now and then wait until you know what your counter pick for the top lane would be, I think. Syndra's also available, so when you see this many mid lane bans, you very rarely see Syndra still up. There is Talia though, so we'll see if Immortals have a pick ready for it. Or if Pebota wants to maybe play it more of a farm lane. Still plenty of picks you can kind of take here. Not too many champions really punish Talia that hard. Syndra would be one of them mm. if Pebota wanted to take it here. I think Lucian's the other one that springs to mind. Otherwise, you mostly just kind of relegated to farming. Although, of course, Talia's big issue is that she has so much priority and connected pick to flame. And there's Galio back for Pebota. Wow, so I thought maybe they'd go protect and Syndra and just put CC in every position and try and burst out whoever's in the front line. But now, I mean, they're at risk of having extremely low damage. You got Renekton, and Galio, Soul Lanes, and then the Lethality Jin. But they're gonna really rely heavily on their setup. And I, that's why we're seeing a Fiora here. How would they flex these around? We have seen, so if Talia wasn't such a mid lane champion, we have seen who he's. Yeah. Fiora in the mid lane. They have, and they're gonna at least, you know. They're gonna at least tease it. Yep. Right here, because we know the Fiora is good against the Galio. It's just, can you <laughs> Talia against a Renekton? Probably not. And Fiora in Renekton is actually a really hard matchup for Darshan. They just want it for late game team fights since they're up against a wall of tanks. Yep, makes sense there, but uh, could be tough to get Darshan to that spot. Of course, once Fiora scales up, 
pretty unstoppable in 1v1s, but of course can help out in the team fights as well. I think IMT putting a lot of focus on really just doubling down on all the CC and picks they got in game number one. I think their team fight was a bit more robust. With Pobels are having so much damage coming out of the Corky this time. It'll be much more about roaming and CC pressure. But if Immortals can snowball, this game will get rapidly out of control. Yeah, that's the thing when you're picking these super tank or super tanky team compositions. It's actually more like three bruisers than Immortals has. The Jarb and Galio synergy means when you're ahead, you can just dive to however you want because they're trapped in the Cataclysm for the heroic entrance. I do like that. Flame, of course, is back on Renekton, but the core Renekton and Jarvan, two of Flame's yeah. bigger picks there, both on the top side, just in case they need to flex them around. Definitely interesting to see, again, all the teams have different priorities on the picks. I think CLG, again, showing us very much their style and preferences here in both the drafts we've seen in this series, but Jin for Cody Sun. Jin has not been everybody's champion, and it's definitely fallen down in a lot of games, but he's fairly confident in it, at least in this next game as well. See if he runs into issues versus Oma in particular as he get under the rift for game number two. Yeah, Mortals looking to complete the season sweep over CLG. They beat them the first time they met. This would also give them sole control of first place as well as the tiebreaker over CLG would put them in amazing position with two weeks left in the split if they can close out this game. Feels like it's been a little while, not too long, but a little while since the Mortals were sitting atop the standings at the end of a split, but be able to do it here, or at least get very close, taking a decisive victory here over CLG. CLG, of course, trying to make sure that doesn't happen, so we'll see what Omar can do as he's added to the roster here for this second game. Small. Looks like right now, Pobelt is just having a dance there in mid. And everyone's kind of spreading out, getting those awards going. Immortals, decent defensive vision, actually spotting Afro poking towards the Raptor camp, and a little bit of a group here for IMT. Cody and Ole going to move forward and maybe hope sticks a parts a silly way. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how this bottom lane plays out just because Cody, Sun, and Ole have been so consistently good. Pretty much halfway through the spring split, they started to turn it on. And then this split, Minions they've just been in full gone. form. And when you have Ole on Thresh, Thresh and Bard, I put as his top two champions. Mm -hmm. And then Cody, Sun's Jin last game was just so good at sniping squishy targets in team fights. It does feel like in general they're was surprisingly aggressive as a duo. I mean, definitely made good work of the defensive Soraka Triss lane. Is Afro looking for a blind hook, maybe? Does get a ward down, hooks an Ole. And my force of five, but he plays back and then flashes who he's trying to steal there. The Raptors grabs two of them, as I am here actually leashing. Yeah, a pretty slick hook there by Aphromoo. Who he getting the ward vision for Afro to land the hook, and Ole kind of forced to flash away. Immortal's still able to pull off the super leash, so to speak, uh, but still walking past the ward uh, that was placed earlier by CLG. Not yep. sure what he's going to hope to get done with that. Another ward from CLG as well, just to make doubly sure. That's Flame and Darshan doing battle, but really Darshan trading pretty nicely. Even, I suppose, at level one, but getting very aggressive on the Fiora as Omar already is going to take down that red, but another level two gang incoming to his Talia. Gonna have to flash again. Still find some effectiveness with that level two gank. Smithy again taking the aggression away from Huhi and then Huhi that's a nice play by Huhi actually to stick around a little bit and get harassed on Smithy, but not much more they can do other than that. Yep, because he actually is gonna take the blue, so it doesn't lose that much given that he path around to two different lanes before moving into this side of the jungle. Again, bottom lane helping out with those leashes is gonna make that a lot easier. So we'll see where Smithy goes next, or if he just kind of falls back to that same farming pattern we saw in game number one. Yeah, Jarvan arguably one of the best level two slash level three gankers in the game. So you can see why X Smithy's paths haven't been so hard farm. He really wants to get his ganks out early on uh, before he goes to farming, as long as Omar Guard isn't gonna counter jump with him. Great repose there from Darshan. <laughs> gonna yeah. save himself. In fact, maybe even kind of around no help though. So 2v1 would be a little too miraculous at this stage of the game. And we always have to come back to what is the cost of these early ganks? Because Omar God hasn't ganked yet. Uh, he's still clearing the jungle. And if Xsmithy is able to go and still get his full clear without Omar getting any ganks off, then sure, the ganks didn't work, but there's still good ganks in that situation because there's how much CLG did to counter. Xsmithy didn't need to commit too much either as Omar will take his blue and maybe bop down here to the bottom lane. Yep, he's going to move in. Good ward from IMT. He's going to spot him, though. After we're going to try and line up a hook, but Ole, defensive hook, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Keeping him safe. Yeah, so... It's kind of the first gank attempt from Omar God. 
Not much he can do. He'll just continue closing out. Also pointing out the Doran's ring on Jin once again. Definitely feels standard at this point. Uh, Jin has an AP ratio on his dancing grenades. Also helps him spam spells in lane to get the wave shoving. Plus, I feel like Jin is very much a caster type of AD carry. That's why you can go Average Blade on him early and get away with it. Also why I think Doran's ring can be a very good idea. And we're actually going to get some counter jungling done here. As Smithy does reach back into this mid lane, who he already out, though. Um, are in danger of getting chased away, but they cannot see him right now. He's going to take the boss gun after safety. And by safety, that's bottom lane. Maybe a die being set up here, although he's going to hit the recall button right now. Yeah, looking at the goal between the junglers, as we mentioned, next Smithy went for many more ganks. Only 100 up on Omar God. So both these guys will be able to go back to base and buy a Bami Cinder if they so choose. The belts are actually roaming right now. Cinder was the pick for Omar, but holding that thought is Dashan could be in a spot of bother. Flame gonna stun him already. Now I think Dashan knows too late. Pobelts are here. Can repose for the taunt's gonna be their first blood. On oh, the rush, no! Oh. Dashan having a takedown flame for first blood. That's the type of outplay you wanna see on the Fiora. Reposting gives him just enough damage soak to get this done. Let's watch it. Flame goes for the stun early before they're paused. But that immediately takes turret aggro. And now Pobelter is trying to walk over, get the taunt into the auto. The vital proc was also pretty critical there, but he gets the slow onto him right there. The turret finishes off. Then he still is able to flash away before Pobelter can chain with the Q. Pobelter wanted his justice punch to hit first. I think he could have queued during the taunt to get the kill, but Darshan able to flash away. Yeah, it might have just been a little too early, but regardless of models, Messing up or not, Darshan with a bit of an outplay, able to grab first blood for himself in a very tricky situation. Does TP back to lane flame. Will actually walk back, so a little bit of a win there. But Darshan going to play catch up on CS, and that extra gold helps so much in a matchup where who's getting pressured. Yeah, the Fiora Renekton matchup, while we usually see it go to Renekton, is a very swingy one because they're kind of stat checking each other at a certain point. Talking about that TP advantage, Ooh, though. Great grab from Afro. Cody actually already getting the spears built in. Oh, they're going to try and hook him around, but Omar's here to turn this around. 3v2 does feel very unfair. Ole is going to get knocked up there. The root's not enough. It actually is Omar. Ole still running out of the way, but the rent there from Six, they're able to grab the kill. Cody trying to turn something around here in a 1v3. What? Flashes in, gets body slammed, and dies instantly. Cody, son, what are you doing at the end of that one? Six, they still had heal. For the final play, Cody gives over the second part of the double kill is a lot went wrong there for mortals. A, Pobelter canceled his teleport before the gank had completely been turned around. But to double check, he canceled under his own volition rather than who he interrupting it. Yeah, so here we go. Hook starts, teleport comes in to save. Pobelter does cancel as he walks away while Ole is still caught, then he flashes while he's slowed, so six seconds fall through. He gets a little bit low as the bouncing grenade falls to him, and Cody's son, bro, he's got heal. Easily picking up the double kill for Stix A. Uncharacteristic mistake there. And oh, Pobelta didn't cancel it, was the who he ultimate that picked it off. Yep. That's what made it look like he stepped back. Nice play there by Huhi and the whole COD team. Lick move there. That's who he's able to cancel that out. And uh, yeah, bit of a head scratcher there for Cody's son. Didn't even have, like, it was reloaded. It was like, oh, maybe he's got a four shot. I'm like, nope, just reloading. Ready with shot number one. He so. already hit him with the four shot. <laughs> All right. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, mm. two kills for six A on the bottom side. It's going to feel great. This is how I already built up. Rico was added in. I'm flame. Going to try and get aggressive at Darshan. Just able to back off and. Barely 10 CS between them at this stage. Again, Darshan going to feel comfortable. And the only real matchup where I think CLG were feeling a ton of pressure because bot lane's now firmly in their favor. Again, despite a small CS deficit in favor of Cody. And Smithy's going to have to have another miracle dive as Pobelts are roaming up for Darshan. Taunts him up. Justice Punch is good. Proposes that will block some of that early damage. But pops the ulti. Now can't get out of the Cataclysm. You already burnt the launch flame. Able to take the kill. Yeah, and even Cody's son tried to get in there with a deadly flourish down the stretch. They've actually abandoned that lane with the roam mid, but the Darshan kill presented itself while it's the was killing blue. Little greedy there by Darshan trying to get a ward so he could play more aggressive in lane. Ends up dying before he even gets there. Foot smite from McSmithy also taking that big raptor away from Omar. Omar didn't have his smite, so tough to contest. 
KOG, I think. Up a thousand gold or so. We'll be happy with kind of the kills that have been gifted over, I'd say. Uma with a nice play in bot lane to get the first one. And I think Cody may have been dead still in that situation, but probably means yeah. you shouldn't lose your flash if you think you're going to die. Uh, definitely not. I think you're going to back away. Uh, but I want to point out the Ninja Tabi by Stixe. I think this is the right buy. If you remember the last time Lethality builds were in, Ninja Tabi became a massive buy because they actually reduce the damage from a Lethality user by 20 to 30%. Uh, and even if the auto attack damage passive went from 12% to 10%, you still get the same armor. Lethality is all about taking you as close to zero as possible, and Ninja Tabi prevent that from happening. Really like it against Jin, and I'm surprised more people haven't switched back to it since it was so recently that we had the last Lethality. Yep, you can see 16 Afro just feeling so much comfort now. Ninja Tabi certainly helping out there. Except that break will be a mountain, but teams aren't looking at it just yet. Still pretty even. CLG gold lead has kind of shrunk a little bit. Not quite the thousand that it was before, but they've got pressure in their lane. Starshan losing pretty heavily in CS is maybe bad news there, but he knows he'll catch up eventually. See if CLG want to try and pressure those bots so that they're winning or try and salvage some of Darshan's early lane. They are going to start the Drake briefly, but back up as a model's kind of showing they already have vision. Yeah, and Flame really starting to take control of that top lane, just standing in front of the wave and maybe looking to do something here. That's why who he's trying to relieve the pressure in that top lane by cheating towards it as to leave it. Well, so Belter again can also leave, but CP not up for now. And both of these champions have pretty low global ranges on level one ulties, so mm -hmm. gonna try and grab that XP. So, oh my god, back down to the bottom lane. His last visit was here. His next one will be as well. Who he also going to interrupt Pobelta. Actually, also trying to cut off here. So maybe IMT tipped off to the play here in the bottom lane. But Omar flash ulti after the body slam real nice. But Cody takes the lantern out. Ole flashes a bit late, but still enough to get Jin out of the way. Meanwhile, another fight's happening. Oh, that's Pobelta going to go down to who he cut off again as Afro was also there. The wall not quite going to grab Afro, but who's actually going to go over and put the wall down as Omar going to get another flash as Smithy forced to get out from under the body slam. Yeah, strange play there as both junglers had to make a choice to take the fight in the bot lane or in the mid lane. Omar chooses bot lane. Xmithy actually chose the river and they still lose that one. So now they're thinking about pressuring this. Technically both top laners do have teleport and could join if a fight erupts. Zashan actually in a better position because he has a recall, but you have to walk back to the lane. Ole comes back in towards those rocks by Huhi, but looks like this seed is going to get shut down for a little while longer. Flash hook from Afro does not connect on a Cody. Oh, they tried. The only team I've seen do that in competitive was Afro with double lift. Stick saying Afro missed the hook. The, the play there is you hook with Blitz as you alt with Callista to pull it even further back, but they missed that one near highlight moment. And Huhi just destroys Pull Belter. Flash for flash as well. And then Xmithy can't help out that much. Three people in the brush. Efra killed him off, hooking him ah. there. Ole still gonna get chased down, hooking a land. Great prediction on the jump. Ole gonna move back in, but I think he may be too far forward. TP from IMT coming in, but is it not enough? They actually do arrive in time. It's the double, there's the taunt. You know, to Afro, that's the kill for Flame. As Sticks a barely escaping that last gen shot. Afro not locked in on Blitz yet, missing a few crucial hooks. Also, Flame teleported away from his winning lane to make that play happen, so what more can they get? Because Darshan kind of gets back in the laning phase for that one. Gonna need something here, looking for bot tower right now. Flame stays actually also, so probably gonna just be a trade here as Darshan continues to work that top lane. But Darshan actually kind of far ahead in the race. Yeah. Well, it looks like three people is a little bit better than one. Absolutely, I think this means first charge for Immortals. As long as they stick to it. See if it's close. Minion's still there. Yeah, Darshan has to wait for his way. Darshan's not even gonna get it. Because Ole did the early recall to get back up here. Heads up play there from Ole. Probably not in danger of getting Dover. Kuki being here maybe changes that equation. Bot side though, Afro landing up another hook. It's maybe getting out of the way. Cody with a nice juke to the right. Moves Blitz, not quite calibrated just yet. Everyone sticks around. Ole has no flash. Prox's courage shield goes in, plays back instead of towards him. Tanks just enough damage for the rest of the mortals to pile in onto Afro Moo. And Ole gets back in time to stop Darshan from killing the top turret. It looks like Flame is back to this turret as well, so 
He's going to continue that 1v1 where he still has so much pressure. Got a couple kills recently after he picked the bottom side. So Black Cleave is actually done for him. Kind of accelerating his position in the matchup. Also, a dust play done for Cody. So uh, this is kind of a dangerous time for CLG, it feels like. It is. No Blade of the Room King on Stixie. At danger of losing multiple turrets. Still trying to make plays. Gotta land those hooks. All right, that hook lands. But the Lantern is there. Afro is trying to step on it, but Pobelta's like, eh, oh, can't actually click it. Uh, that feels bad. Pobelta not able to get out of that one. Who he grabbing the kill. Heads up play from CLG. Just trying to make as much stuff that he can click on. Bunch of wars, bunch of champions. You're not getting that Lantern, man. Feels oh, Belter gets denied. Well. Is there like some sort of trick there? Probably not. It's like auto, yeah, yeah, auto, they, auto attack ally or something. Yeah, sometimes you can zoom in if you want to click it because <laughs> you, can't, new tech. you can't actually uh, put something on the exact same spot the Lantern yeah. is. That's something you used to be able to do but no longer. So if you try and ward the Lantern, the ward will actually get bumped. But champions still have collision radiuses, so if you put your champions in the right spot, you can prevent him and block him from making it through. Well, so CLG going to get the Drake after that pick, so nice little roam. Merits some, a couple of objectives and some additional gold off that kill. Ole cancels Stixay's back, but not for too much longer. And I imagine Blade of the Ruined King will now be finished this Flame. Still working this top lane here versus Darshan, but Darshan's getting there. Oh, Flames, he's grumpy. <laughs> Thinking about a tower dive, but lane. Wave not there. Flame was born in this lane. It's his territory. Trying to push Darshan back. CS lead not uh, traditional here for Flame, but still looking good. Approaching 30, is Smith going to roam up as well? What well, in is here for CLG, though. In fact, they're going to make a full-on swap. With uh, yeah. Darshan moving to that bottom side. Hoping that Immortals can swap back up in time to save the turret, knowing that that turret is pretty low. But they still got to worry a little bit about just having control of the map. Darshan is clearing a wave way back in CLG territory, which does lower CLG's map pressure. And buy some tempo for Immortals in which they're going to take the Rift I think I love this play in general from Immortals, knowing how long these lanes are going to take. Flame sticks around for a little while longer. It does get his recall cancelled by Stixe. He threw a spear into it, but tried the Rift Herald there. Should be able to get it nice and comfortably. And Cody and Ole were already mid lane, getting some pressure down there, kind of knowing they were already looking to transition off of that bottom lane. So Flame should make it down the bot relatively soon. It might even be a setup here in the top lane. Yeah, notice Flame's Bramble Vest as well. This is an item that I specifically like into Fiora. And I like the fact they didn't rush it because he's going to be able to bully Fiora with the Black Cleaver. And when Fiora is going to be coming back, it will be potentially from healing from the vitals. The grievous wounds that are applied from the Bramble Vest cut Darshan's vital healing in half if Flame wants to duel him. Got to be careful about Talia though. That's why he doesn't want to immediately fight Darshan. Ooh, by the top side though. Ole actually a little too far forward. Perhaps as Galeos is going to try and save him. Flash that from Omar God. Grabs a knock up of Pobelta. That's going to knock up on the other end. Still gets hooked back in. Three man top lined up. Is there as Cody? Still trying to dish out the damage. Needs to reload though. It's Smithy up far too late for this one. CLG is still looking. Another hook maybe for Afro is who he's roamed up here. Pobelta going to get trapped into Justice Punch. It's blocked by Omar. Does fall down for the dump from Smithy. going to try and get a counter kill. Do manage to grab it on the other end. But now Darshan's going to move into the scene. And Flame, he's going down. Cody not going to get that last little snipe. And CLG with a big team fight win. Yeah, it looks like Aphimu's starting to get locked in a little bit on the Blitz. A couple of crucial hooks. And who he roams up big time. Immortals overcommit at the end of that fight to secure the kill onto Stick saying kind of just like that Immortals was in control of the game but now CLG up nine kills to four with the turret advantage Ooh, Dash on. A little uh -oh. forward played back repost is good stuns up on Ole Cody still chasing does have his flash but uh, a little more conservative this time around we are gonna watch this one more time waiting for the play. Stixay shows early, gets Ole to throw up the hook. Aphromo just walks up to Ole to get the knockup. This also means that when Omar Guard finishes the kill, Afro gets to pull Pobolter back, and that's what traps him in this fight. This then buys some time for Talia to make his way up, or who he rather. So he puts the ground down on the X-Smith, he makes him take a bunch of damage. And notice when Flame teleports in, He's only at half health because he's been fighting with Fiora that whole time. Flame then falls pretty quickly, so a 4 TP from Flame there, and 4 kills to 2 over to CLG in the extended fight. Yep, took the turret there as well, so a huge windfall for CLG, who are now up actually 3,000 gold after that exchange, which is 
pretty massive given that the game was even if not slightly ahead there for Immortal to his CS lead. Some of that here had a big impact in a lot of these side lane plays. 4 0 and 1 as Afro, another hook lands. Galio Ultimate, though, gonna try and lock them all up. Oh my god, could be the target, but Afro gonna double knock up after the fates call. Sticks a bit of Renda Ole. Pobato with a big taunt again, but Xmithy gonna try and trap them all in. Cody can't really fire into it, though. And Sticks is now happy to leap forward and take down the next few kills. Pobato is gonna die. Who he cuts them off with the wall as Flame. Ever to get a pick up there onto Afro. Cody still trying to snipe them, but Sticks gonna hop out of that area. Who he walks around as well. I know IMT still caught off CLG. We're gonna try and get those last few kills there. Who he dominating takes down Flame. Another four kills and two dead once again for CLG. And we're really starting to see Immortal's low damage team composition work against them. Uh, watching who he's positioning in that fight just showed how little he cares about Immortal's damage. Look at where who he is here. Yes, they have a numbers advantage, but he just walks straight up to everyone. He's in the middle of the team. Spamming his threaded volleys. Sure, the taunt lands. Sure, the cataclysm lands. Hui's fine. He flashes back. Stick stays able to stack about 7,000 spears into Pole Belt before taking him down. CLG in a lot of control right now with the Tlee and Callista doing work against these tanks. And despite all the early lane pressure, feels like Jin definitely showing some of those weaknesses here. Nice yeah. kick from Uma, kind of right at that, as Rift Tower has to be channeled. He's about to run out. And we got a bunch of big health pools against Immortals. We got a Blade of the Ruin coming into Leandri's Torment by CLG. They've already built their tank shredding items for that 6,000 gold lead. If CLG keeps this up, if they don't get caught by too many Wombo Calm initiations, I think we'd be on our way to Game 3. Well, Rift Herald is going to be a tragedy. Let's get rendered down by Stix8. More than enough CC for CLG as again. I just kind of had to burn that cooldown. Who he gonna force a TP and flame out of the lane, doing so much work on this Talia, just an immense amount of damage. Despite tanking a couple turret shots, Leandri is not helping there at all. I am gonna get a trade ish on the top side there, taking the turret, but Afro all alone pressured in, and now Pobelta 1v5. Not getting out of this one. Oh my god, this time with the kill. Afro takes it to a few turret shots on the way out but doesn't really care about it, as everyone on Immortals was off recalling. Let's check the bush, so Darshan makes it back safely. Tara did stay up for Immortals, though they got the outer, but tier two was not taken in trade for CLG, so a small win there as IMT at least get gold back to themselves, but these turrets won't take too long for CLG to really get, especially as Darshan developed even more pressure now that Fiora is starting to scale, and unfortunately for IMT, Fiora is the least of their current problems. Yeah, but it'll be a, on the short list of late game problems if it gets there, which is always the issue against Fiora here. But the fact that they haven't gotten a huge advantage for Flame early, but mainly it's the fact that who he has gotten so big on this Talia. Immortals could have drafted Syndra in place of that Galio for more standard team composition, but instead opted for this all-in strategy. What happens? Well, Afro looks for a hook is what happens. Hobelta is the target, but somehow not big enough of a hitbox to get grabbed there by Afro. Just out of range to get a win there from Pobelta. But uh, I spell Gordon on the way next for Galio, who's uh, showing how tanky he isn't right now. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of times you'll see a Frozen Heart off the Galio second, but that's also when you have a little bit more damage in your team. I mean, I'm so often seeing, even if you're going to do something like a Galio J4, it's a J4 top lane, and he's building Titanic Hydra and Black Cleaver. Uh, or you have not Jin as your AD carry for more sustained damage. Well, Here we go, though. Right in, trying to make the play happen. Who he is going to be the target. They need to try and shut down this Talia. Finally goes down. As Cody is still firing shots away, Flame is going to die to Darshan, is able to tread that through, but Stix stays so low. Darshan, they're going to save the back end of the fight. Cody leaping in the hook lands for Ole, but Darshan, he actually got a triple kill in and amongst the mess. Oma, a great double stun, as Darshan's going to try and what? shut the rest of it down. Ole wants to kill Afro, is going to hook him up. Darshan needs a little bit more repose in there, does take it down. That's a unofficial quadra. There's the ace for Seal G. They'll take it no matter how it happens. Yeah, unofficial quadra, official ace for Seal G. Even when Immortals seemingly get the damage on most of the threats, they one-shot Huhi, they take Sticks a super low. Ah, Fiora is still there, man. Unlucky. Five, one, and three now on Darshan. Tough laning phase, but he has arrived. Yep, and uh, that's kind of the problem here, CLG. 
And the fight's been advantage in the early game. Pretty smooth mid game and some insurance in dark time. This was about as good as you could ask for for IMT. Yeah, I love the initiation from Paul Belter, although. Or, sorry, from X Smithy. I think Paul Belter point blank ulted just for the knockup. I don't know how necessary that was. Uh, but anyway, Stick Say then also is taking pretty low. Cody Sun going all the way into the back line. Sistar Sean, they have to worry about. And they did a nice job getting some damage back onto Darshan here, nearly killing him there with a deadly flourish. Hook, though, from Afro secures that final kill, and Omar God having a quietly solid Gragas game here after being subbed in for Dardock. Making all the right plays, hitting every single flash body slam at some pretty ridiculous angles at times, and quietly 3, 1, and 13. 16 of 19 kill participations for the man. He is certainly... Quietly overachieving here in this one. As Pobelta grabs his blue buff, but IMT, it's about all their small victories at this point. 5,500 gold down, three items out done for Huhi, while Swiss were finished for Stixay. And Fiora's also starting to get a few more items. Yeah. I was worried enough with just those two carries. Now there's a third on the way. Yeah, the more clumped up that Immortals can make the team fights, the better. And uh, Cody Sun can actually do a lot with his lethality build because it's not like he's up against tanks. So he can still get a lot of damage out in team fights if he's able to stay safe. Gonna be an uphill battle for sure. CLG has the tools to get the initiations as well. I mean, looking at the talisman of Ascension onto Aphromoo plus the boots of mobility, that is a very fast blood strength. He probably doesn't even have to rely on hitting hook. Nope, the most reliable hook is the one you hit after your E. Aphromoo's yep. just gonna be running at them. I hope he gets Righteous Glory too, but I think that's probably too much movement speed. A little overkill. <laughs> you do hit pretty sharp diminishing yep. <laughs> returns on move speed. But even now, he's just zooming I mean, without his talisman. The talisman is to help others keep up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's fine on his own. Actually, one of those things where, uh, I mean, I think the coin overall has become such a strong item, but we don't talk about the passive that often. In this instance, that's actually one of its better uses, because I'm going to be running in. Flame gets a stun there onto Darshan, a little early on the repost, but I still a plenty there for Darshan with his Ravenous Hydra, and Flames is kind of like, I can keep you here, but I probably can't do much else than that. Yeah, and if he does teleport in, Darshan won't be able to interrupt it, but he will be able to take him pretty low. 6 eight, pretty low here. Off the Baron, Curtain Call just to push him off. He needs to life seal it up, but uh, he's got this wave to meet in mid lane as INT rushing back down, Huey down to the bottom side, a long wall here is Flame. Yeah. Gonna get caught up, no, oh, oh. makes it over. And now the TP's down, but Flame already dead to Huhi. Now the heal's gonna come out, and Poe Belt is like, oh, what do I do, 1v2, Omar, gonna find it. Smithy, Hook's gonna miss. This is crucial though, fight bottom side with Poe Belter and Cody, oh, he might clean up. Cody actually roamed down there, Poe Belter able to buy enough He's got time. red buff. Needs a few more autos, does have one, slows massive there as he speeds up yeah. from the wall, flashing auto W, beautiful play from Cody. Cody does exactly what he needs to do right there. Gets the move speed and the first shot for the 99% Dusk Blade slow. Then also knows to flash forward so Darshan can't make it to the Blast Cone. Turning around COD's bottom lane play and then also the rest of the team avoiding the initiation. Another little bit of avoidance. Now they go on to Omar. Hooking the roots, double play is going to fall over on in. Afro. Gotta go fast. Only needs to flash out of the way. There's the ultimate from Galio. Traps him with the counter. Goes with the double knocker, but Ole falling down to Afro. Taunt lands in. They need to kill Sticks here, but they don't quite have enough. So much to see, but Cody avoids the next week. Knockover then gets that kill. Roots in onto Afro. Cody again. He's going to save the back end of the fight. Jin Ooh. grabbing the double. Like Smithy barely living in the Baron pit. Sticks there escapes, but just barely. Cody's son and a bunch of setup is what Immortals team composition has come down to here. Flame stalling as much as possible. Darshan and Huli used a lot of resources to take him down, and then they want to get Poe Belter too, but Cody's son is recalled, and that's what catches COG off guard right there. Deadly first stun, Poe Belter gets him, Huli goes down. Big bouncing grenade lands on Darshan right at the end. Chases him down, flash, Q. Deadly flourish for the kill, and then they continue the play, which is the impressive part. Ole baits around Baron, and Cody runs all the way back up to then use the Galio ult that they were unable to use before. Kind of pulling themselves back in this game, which felt lost. Yeah. Against a Fiora, Talia, Callista that are all fed versus your team of tanks, but Cody's son doing a lot to pull this back. And um, I mean, CLG still up 4,000 gold, and I don't know how large the windows will be back into this game for IMT, kind of giving some of that scaling hook from Afro is not going to help. Oh, Cancels the EQ. No, he actually queues out of the way. Gets the E down before he can, but who he's still going to chase that locket, going to proc. 
I have enough protection to save the jungler. Yeah, how is he still alive? He is not. He just takes a bunch of damage there. You can see the very tanky J4 build coming through. Getting a bunch of shields from his W, since it does scale with max health right now, but another Baron set up play. Five Walks out off. Oh, Smithy lances up. Back to knock him under Omar as the TP in from Flame. Knock back there, Huhi on the side, but he needs to avoid some of the CC. Sticks in Afro are too low. So he can't actually join this fight. Omar Smith to try and buy some time for the hook from Oli. He's going to see a Flame able to take that kill. And now you wonder if Immortals wants to force this fight. They know Sticks and Afro are low. Darshan has TP. Darshan's probably going to have to teleport in. Picked one out. It's actually Flame that Afro hooks, but he flash ulties back into the pit. They're still tanking it, but Huhi doing a lot of damage. He's both trying to reduce some of that. Smithy, he's the one that tries to initiate it. That means the Baron threat is off Sean's the tier. Hateful. Darshan flashing forward, looking for Flame to post in. Drop back there is a great shot from Huhi's maybe in a van there after the fight. IMT just get ripped to shreds. It's Pobelta the only one left, but he will die in very quick succession. Picture perfect repost by Darshan in that fight. Throwing the stun back at Immortals. In the past, Darshan has been criticized for teleporting in at the wrong moments on Fiora. That was absolutely the right one because they could win the fight. Immortals have overextended themselves. They clean up the fight and they get the bear. So they able to help that secure who he with a great wall to start it off an IMT desperate to get into this pit. Yeah, but they walled really early because the Baron was still at 9,000 health and the first fight was actually pretty bad by CLG. Omar takes all the damage and the team has to bail out. Look at Aphromoo and Stixay's health bars. So this is why Immortals thinks they can turn it around because they have five people at Baron. But we talked about low damage. They do not kill Baron quickly at all. Aphromoo hooks over, Flame runs ultimate, and then Darshan puts his teleport up. Huge seismic shove by Huhi. And then just watch Darshan in this fight. It's very tricky to enter a fight when they have all the CC, but he dashes in, reposts as the knockup comes from Stixay and Aphromoo. So they chained those stuns together. That then opens him up the small window he needs to proc in that vitals and clean up the end of that fight. And still G now with Baron and a monumental gold lead. 8,000. Ole gonna hook Afro, but Afro is gonna hook back and return. Doesn't grab Cody. That was the target he was looking for, but CLG playing with a lot of, uh, lot of pace as they move back down here to the bottom side. Yeah, hoping to pull off the epic Callista Blitz combo. 0 for 2. <laughs> but one day. Give them points for trying. Certainly do. This is the trouble, though, for Immortals. We know they have such low damage. We know they need big setup 5v5 team fights. Darshan's got Baron minions in one wave. COG has the rest of the Baron minions in the other wave. And they have Julia to collapse. Death stance as well for Darshan. So uh, close to impossible to kill Fiora in any good amount of time for Flame. And Charat's already starting the fourth. CLG take the bottom tier two. And Huhi is working on that mid turret as we speak. Flame, I mean, he's just trying to clear waves and kind of keep Dashan off the turret, but sooner rather than later, Flame's going to lose it, and IMT going to have to come up with a play before CLG just take everything with this Baron buff. That's two more turrets down. All of a sudden, six turrets to two Immortals. Backs right against their turrets as they try and defend. Yeah, they had that small window coming back into the game, but you wonder if they have been outscaled now by the three damage item Fiora in one lane, the seven kill Callista in the other, and the seven kill Talia in mid. Everywhere they look, there are enemies. Who and six actually have the exact score line right now, which is pretty rare. Seven, two, and 11. But certainly looking good. That's going to be a hook, landing onto Poe Balter, who taunts it up, but just buying some time for the rest of the siege wall cuts. Two people up from IMT. It's a dual lane that's currently being shot out. And uh, again, IMT trying to find some angles, but don't forget Darshan is still here in the top lane. Waiting for the minions. So you're gonna want to finish off this turret right here. Will Immortals fight? Here we oh, go. Smithy gets in off the Huhi and Kali ultimates up pretty good. Gets the knockup, grabs it. Huhi almost about to go down, but the turret's falling in the top side. Afro getting low as IMT continues the fight, but they just don't have enough. Cody gets out the try and snipe 6A with these ultimates, but he's gonna hop away. The last bullet is gonna connect, but still too much protection as Omar barely gonna live. Rends down Pobelta as 6A grabs that kill. He gets the shutdown as well onto Jin as Omar gonna grab that. That's four kills for nothing in flame. He had to do with Fiora and just couldn't do it. Stixa just gets to keep stacking up Ren. The longer the fight goes, the more damage Callista can rend you for. That's probably the game. Looks like it as the Nexus starts are going to be 
Objective coming up. There's one already done. Dashan got a lot of work done in the top side just by himself, but CLG will open up the Nexus and force a third and final game. Yeah, Mortals died 30 times that game. That's what it took to take down their Nexus, and it was a tough one, actually, because Immortals was scrappy. And even though CLG jumped out to that massive early lead, there were some questionable moments where it looked like Immortals might come back into it. In the end, though, an extremely low damage team composition by Immortals. They could never get in to take down enough of the CLG threats. And even if they could catch Talia, they couldn't deal with Kalista. And in a difficult matchup, Fiora into Renekton, Darshan did make it work. Very clutch TPs to pick up enough kills to become a huge force. I think this is a smart draft from CLG. It kind of played well despite all of the pressure that Immortals were able to offer. I mean, again, still exploring so much on this patch, but the arms race of carries versus tanks continues. It's something we've seen a lot in the history of League of Legends and very evident in a game like this. Yeah, and it could have swung the other way, right? If the tanks get ahead, then the carries feel uses and they keep getting those initiations and the game is just over. But credit to CLG for not buying into all the tank hype and matching them tank versus tank said, okay, Leandry's Torment exists, Fiora exists, Blade of the Rune King exists, we can handle this, man. And they did, so bring on game three for a battle for first. It's I think, just what we wanted. I think more than handle it, but for a deep dive on how CLG tied the series, let's hand it off to Dash and Mark. Thank you very much, gentlemen. CLG striking back in game two to extend us to a third game in this series, but bottom line is that game was just crazy fun to watch. Yeah, that was a junkyard fight where it was just back and forth over and over, constant team fights, and it felt like at any moment either team could really take that game and run away with it. As well, I really love champions like on both sides of the coin here. I, I thought it was really fun to watch the, you know, heavy tank comp here on the side of Immortals, but then I thought CLG made some really intelligent uh, adjustments here coming into game two in order to come away with the victory. Right, I really like what I saw overall. First, you know, CLG, after uh, Afro got forced onto Soraka last game through a lot of uh, support bans, this time around he grabs the Blitzcrank early, Immortals kind of reacts and takes a very, very tanky team comp. You basically have one person in this entire comp that you want to hook in, and right. he's usually out of range. So overall, really smart out of them, and then I, like Jat was saying, I like the idea to say, well, we don't need to match you tank for tank, even though they do already have a good front line in the Blitzcrank and the Gragas. Instead, they take the Fiora to give themselves a couple other win conditions because if the Fiora goes off, you can split push. Right. And even in team fights, if they all in your back line and they're able to kite out, you know, enough to kill one or two people as they go down, well, then Fiora can play cleanup duty. Right, it's funny. We talked throughout the entire day about the power of tank comps, right? Triple tanks, and then Immortals goes one step further. They go, how about Quadra tank? And then again, as you mentioned, the Fiora, though, coming up huge for CLG as an insurance policy against those tanks, saying, fine, you want to go tank, we're going to take one of the few champions that's a fantastic tank buster and can spread the map out. Right, and Immortals tanks, to be fair, are two of them are more bruisers. And Correct. the benefit of that is when you pick the tanks, sometimes they have relatively weak early games. Not that you can't make plays with them, but that they don't win the matchups for the most part. And in this case, they are able to use these bruisers to hopefully generate their leads so that way they can use them from ahead and just keep diving in. All right, and that's not necessarily what no. happens because 17 minutes into the game, CLG is the one that comes out on top of a skirmish in the top lane, four for two. Let's take a look at this one. This is off the back of the fact that uh, Immortals had already kind of lost the early game. Fiora got going off a failed dive as well as Cody Sun kind of lost his mind and flashed in one yeah. time. And then here's a top lane fight where they try and get something going, but uh, they react very well on the side of CLG. That said, Immortals does land a nice taunt. They're trying to kite this one out, but people are coming in a little bit too slow because when you have this monster tank comp, you kind of want everyone to fly in at once and blow a target up. Here, Smithy shows up late, the teleport's coming in late, and even though they try and turn this back, CLG is, for the most part, able to kite this out, and they end up getting a four for two at the end of all of this. Yeah, uncharacteristically poor game for Cody Sun, as you mentioned, the early, you know, kind of blunder in the bot lane to hand over some advantages, then even in some late game fights, maybe overreaching in places where he didn't need to. Looking for the hero play, probably could have played it more reserved in some cases. Who's to say exactly? exactly. I want to push his head to another team fight 23 minutes into the game. This one around the Dragon CLG picking up another ace. Yep, and once again, this is a, a situation where it almost worked out really well for Immortals. You see this is the time that they managed to get the jump on everyone. A huge mistake out of Flame there. Actually channeled his teleport in the middle, kind of fat fingered his uh, teleport when he went for the flash. And there just happened to be a ward right there that ends up getting channeled onto. Uh, he goes down, doesn't really get as much out as he wants, but they do finish off the Talia. 
barely kill Stixay. It felt like if they were a little bit further ahead, this game was a little bit closer. This is a fight that they smashed, but because so many little things went wrong, yep. they have to blow so many resources to finish off Stixay. Now they're cutting out, and then Ole gets uh, too aggressive here. Instead of cutting back and maybe trying to help out Cody Sun and slowly working their way up to the top of the map and keep cutting out, he did walk forward looking for a hook. That's why I like this fight, though, because as you mentioned, it shows where Immortals comp can be successful if a couple things go slightly differently. Maybe if the gold leads a little bit closer, because Stixay, that close to going down. Oh. But it then required a flash hook lantern from Ole to get Cody Sun in for the final kill. But now we're on the wrong side of the fight, and the two of us are trying to kite away from a Fiora. And so, again, the resources spent to get the kill meant they didn't have enough resources left to win the fight. But again, Stixay goes down a little bit sooner, and Immortals turns the tide there. Right, same same situation with Huhi. If Huhi dies just a little bit faster, if they if Flane's flash does not get interrupted by his teleport, and he just right. you know empower WQs Huhi and kills him, it's a very very different situation. Yeah, a little tiny execution mistakes can cost you the game. Next up, 29:30 into the game, another race for CLG around the. Baron, another example of a situation where Immortals actually plays the beginning of the fight very well, perhaps overreaches once they see that they're winning. Yeah, able to use some like tricky movement there where uh, Smithy goes over the wall, gets Lantern back out as uh, Pobelter goes onto Smithy's old position to end up over the wall. Just some tricky movement all around. They eventually end up in a situation where Omar God is the one who ends up uh, getting hooked out there. Now, Darshan hasn't teleported in yet. He's still pu 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 pushing down bottom, so we got a force on the Baron. This leads to an Afro hook as Darshan actually teleports in. Maybe a small overextension because they do stay on the Baron after the hook off. They could have started kiting out a little bit before. They end up not choosing to, uh, to kite out right away, and now they're getting chased down. And this is still a very very close fight, but Darshan has the perfect repost here to avoid a ton of AoE CC and then still barely gets through the front line to get onto uh, Cody Sun. If he was a little bit further back, maybe they finish off Darshan. That's the power of the Fiora. Once it's rolling, is that it can blow tanks up, and there you see it playing a really good job on cleanup duty. Yep, so hey, Cody Sun's damage still pretty high considering, again, that we called this an off game for him, but it's not enough to surpass the damage coming from all three of the carries of CLG. When you just put the sheer numbers against each other, it's no surprise then that CLG comes out on top. Yeah, the other thing, of course, is how much more health there probably is That's on the Immortals gotta eat through a heck Yeah, you want to win health. a team fight, you got to do about 10k <laughs> damage, or as that might not be the case for uh, Immortals. Uh, all that said, though, Darshan, player of the game, was huge, and yep. especially in that first dive that came in. He played that beautifully to get the kill onto Renekton and stay alive. Stops the Renekton from maybe snowballing, because this is a totally different game if Fiora is playing from behind. When well, this is now the thing, you have to consider Fiora as you go into the next pick ban phase, right? Again, we talk all day about the power of tanks. We're encouraging teams to start jumping onto that tank train. Well, if you're looking across the rift and you're seeing CLG, you now have to be concerned with over-indexing on the tanks and opening up a Fiora pick for somebody like Darshan. It's just something you have to take into consideration on a patch where there's already a ton to think about because as we said, a lot of people are still struggling to figure out the exact meta. And one of the things that we were saying was nice about CLG is it felt like they had a decent grasp on it. And here you see already having a little bit of a trick prepared if you want to go really hard on tanks. CLG find the win and they're going to keep Omar got, Omar got in as a result with everything all tied up. The battle for first place comes down to a game three. You won't want to miss the conclusion of this series, so don't go anywhere.